Welcome everybody, just before lunch. Uh, here we're going to hear to talk about Drupal and the open web and the New Zealand government. And the keen-eyed that went to Drupal South Brisbane would have seen the similar talk there with the Australian government. So this is the New Zealand flavour. It's a little bit more slides and a little bit less time, so just bear with me. Um, for those that don't know me, my name's Sean, and I help uh, lead a team of talented uh, people that look after our enterprise customers. I work for Amazio and been in the Drupal sphere for too long, uh, maybe a dozen or more years. So the problem statement I'm here to try to answer is how popular is Drupal and, and the open web in the New Zealand government? And if you have a bit of money, you can actually probably pay to achieve this um, the following services. Um, but me, I'm a real staunch open source advocate, so I needed a more transparent way of doing this. So if you plug in Wappalizer, and Wappalizer under the hood uses Puppeteer, which is a kind of a Chrome orchestration engine, uh, you can achieve uh, various. The next statement is, uh, how do I get a list of all the New Zealand government? And uh, just like in Australia, there's just too many sources. Um, there's gov.nz forward slash organizations if you want to find A to Z. Um, you can do some snooping on the transparency logs and uh, trails as well. Um, but the main problem is, is that there's no ranking or importance associated with those demands. And here I've uh, picked on the Inland Revenue, who I used to work for, and the Waro Council, who I used to live under. So, um, but one of these sites is going to be a lot more sort of important to the country of New Zealand. So we need a way to quantify this. And Toby actually let me uh, into the secret about this site. So there's actually a cool little site called Domcop. And they have a giant list of 10 million uh, domains on the internet, sorted by popularity, and you can download it. So A+. And it's got this thing called PageRank attached. What the heck is PageRank? For the people that have been in the web for since 1996, you would probably uh, remember there used to be a, a page rank toolbar you could add to your browser and it would tell you the score. And it was really important to get a big score, you know, because that's what Google used back in the day solely to determine how likely you would appear on the search results. Uh, for the purposes of this talk, um, the score of zero basically means that their site is low quality or just brand new. Um, a, sc a score of 10 would be like Wikipedia. So if that's how you can think about it. Page rank is logarithmic uh, with a base of five, similar to the Richter scale, but different. Um, so this basically means a page rank of four is five times more authoritative than the site with page rank. And you can convert it to decimal for the purposes of math. I like it. Then we can add stuff. And just like in Australia, New Zealand is also victim of the MOGs and link rot. And uh, we're, I've got, I pulled out a couple, but um, big cities has moved. And we won't tell you where. And uh, the Auckland City Council, they can't be found, especially when it's flooding. And Lynn's, I think you get, you get bonus points for uh, this error page. It's just mwah. Uh, crawling at scale. And let's just say a lot of New Zealand government domains have Encapsula sitting in front, and Encapsula is not a my home IP and Encapsula are not friends anymore. So we had to change it a few times. Luckily, dynamic IPs exist. And uh, for the people that just want to see some graphs, here we go. And this is based on March 5th data. It is not perfect. Let's underscore that. It's the best that we have available at the moment. And if you have a brand new site that you've just launched, yeah, don't be sad if it doesn't list just yet. 
Um, but this is um, the one chart, I can't actually break it down by state in New Zealand because we don't have any, uh, not like Australia, but what you can probably see in a nutshell here is that silver stripe is actually dominating with over one third of the sites that you likely visit on a day to day powered by silver stripe. Unknown is only 22%, was actually quite low. It's actually higher in Australia. And Drupal 11.6 coming in. And then uh, it's actually quite hard to see, um, but there's actually extremely long tail um, of CMSs in I'd say just a lot more in general. And I just pulled up the Australian one just so you guys can compare and contrast. So uh, so Drupal over there about 27.7, and the next top is actually Squiz. So very different kind of composition sites, even though you know roughly the same kind of uh, you know, demographic. The top 10 sites, uh, we've got Health coming in, uh, page rank 5.87, which if you convert to you know normal base 10, about 12 and a half thousand. Te Papa. Doc stats, the COVID site, uh, immigration, you know, uh, the Christchurch City Council, etc. Now, here's a part I actually had a lot of fun with was uh, actually pulling out all the weird and wonderful things as a course of doing this presentation. And uh, first thing I'd highlight is that Drupal powers roughly, yeah, eleven percent of all the digital experiences that you use. So that helps to, like, when you're at the code sprint on Friday, hopefully that will help you, you know, realize where the effort's going. Silverstripe is definitely the lead. And one, th one sort of observation I had from this is that if you do supply a common web platform, like in Australia, it happens to be based on Drupal, and New Zealand happens to be based on Silverstripe, it's hugely influential. And uh, government departments, Love this. So I think that's a real uh, big win for the teams involved. Uh, and Squiz is less popular in New Zealand, which I found weird. They've got a lot of headquarters and people here. Drupal by version. Uh, I don't know if you know this, but you don't have much time to hang around on Drupal 7 team. Um, so I think it's November, so <laughs> no pressure. <laughs> like, um, no Drupal 10s either, which I found kind of interesting. Um, a, a small smattering of... Uh, but this is by far and away my favorite chart out of this exercise, is that roughly three quarters of all the experiences are powered by open. So this, I think, is absolutely really happy. Uh, there's still a few sites that don't believe in certificates, and uh, yeah, there's always a few. Um, and I find this one particularly, I don't know, like a little bit of irony maybe, like they've censored their site so much that they don't want to display any content. Um, yeah, so it's just an Apache index page, good stuff. Uh, and... Yeah, just like in Australia, people kind of get sick of just dub, 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 you know, like, oh, what if I come up with a new site? <laughs> what now? So enter dub, dub, one, you know, that's the holy grail. Dub, dub, two, that's for pros. And then, yeah, like, oh, oh dub, dub, one, dot math, you know, like, this isn't just a test page, it's an enterprise test page, Tim. <laughs> And then I thought these guys actually stepped their game up. They are on dub dub one hundred. Like it's an actual site. You can visit this thing. Um, it's about the centenary of the First World War. So the, the domain's a little bit of a play on words. And I thought, well, it's only a matter of time, really. So my challenge to you guys is, uh, why not dub dub nine thousand? Like make it happen. There's an awful lot of redirects happening in a nonsensical fashion. This is extremely common in the New Zealand government. And uh, for the people that can parse HTML in their head, this actually does uh, a redirect in your browser after zero seconds. 
um, it's an HTTP 200. It's not a redirect response code. Sent. So very difficult to crawl this because you need an actual browser. And here's a Linz example, same thing. Um, this is actually a fully fleshed out CSS images, the full works, just to let you know, we're gonna redirect you. And this guy has actually re-implemented a Nginx rewrite map in JavaScript. <laughs> Perfection, like mwah. Dangling DNS, um, this is potentially a security issue. Um, so I've redacted the domains out of it and I'll probably get in contact with the departments after this. But suffice to say, if you point your DNS at a SaaS provider, this is Azure, and then you forget about it. Maybe you decom the Azure side, but you leave the domain pointing at it. Mm, I wouldn't do that. Let's just this one point, it's the site host. Um, so yeah, I'll probably reach out to those government departments and do. And we're also seeing the sort of rise of engagement platform also as well. So from consultations to, yeah, just generally getting feedback and from the constituents. And I came across a, a few apps during um, my crawling here, one from Datacom called Datascape another one called Citizen Space, and then the last one is Bang the Table, but they've just rebranded to Engagement HQ. And then I'll, I thought I'd leave you with the highest quality find uh, for that. So we've got the perfection of layout here, one, the, one space of GIFs. We've got tables, because CSS will never catch. It was perfected 20 years ago and has never been updated. It's got support for modern browsers like IE4. It's got MM preload. If you recognize this function, you re the side is there. Ooh. It's got dogs on the home page. And instead of a search button, it's got a button called fetch. I thought, oh. It's got TLS though. Think about that for a second. <laughs> Um, yeah, this is it. So if you're ever wondering, like, go visit them because I've got Google Analytics. I'll see a spike in traffic and they go, what's going on? Dogsafety.gov.nz. Oh, I love it. That, that dog's got a really long tongue. I don't know what's going on there. Right, so going further. I'm going to also probably make this something that will be trending over time because I realize this giving you a snapshot of the data is only so useful. I think actually having the trends over time and seeing if Drupal is increasing or decreasing or the relative changes in the landscape would be more important. Um, I think also the US government would be super interesting as well, maybe because they've got 50 states. Maybe a bit hard to condense down, but. And yeah, I still want to publish this data as well. So I still want to be accessible. And uh, yeah. And again, there's been a bunch of Wappalizer changes and there'll be maybe a dozen more after this talk as well. And just for better sniffs for technology and stuff like that. And uh, that's it. Thank you for coming. Right, any questions? Any, uh, Tom? Right, noted. Uh, I could be, yeah, they might block me from entering the US. That's, uh, yeah, I mean, I mean, often you, sorry, um, yep, yep. Um, yeah, so the question was how aware was the New Zealand government of this information and would it be beneficial? So I think it would be of benefit to them to be more aware of this, especially things that have security angles like DNS. And stuff like that I think is super useful to, to know about. Um, but also maybe if they've got sites that are just need to be put to pasture, like maybe just being a bit proactive and maybe making them static and sticking them on, you know, static hosting provider like GitHub Pages, National Library, yeah. If, the, 
There's already a system for this. Like, let's just, let's just use it. But having a Lotus Notes application for years, I don't know. It's the most secure thing on the internet. So the question was, how do I, like, not, there's a small fraction of Drupal sites I couldn't discern the major version from, and, like, to answer that question, I'm not actually doing deep sniffs as to going any further. Um, if your site identifies in the, yeah, the meta tag, um, then I will pick that up. If you're obfuscating it, because security and obfuscation is your thing, then it's not, it's not going to go any further. Obviously, you still can discern it. And, uh... Uh, it does not, em like, I, I have used other tools in the past that are a bit more aggressive, and they will MD5 hash literally every static file that you present, and then compare that with the known hashes. And, but that's super aggressive. It has heaps of requests, and... <laughs> so, um, I haven't. I tried to be nice to the site. So, uh, yeah, and like, I think just in general, like, if you are, if you do have a website, I think it's quite important that you do present the major version. I think that's quite useful. I don't want to know your minor and your patch. I don't care about that, but at least the actual major version is quite useful. And that goes for all CMSs as well. Like. Silver Strike 4 versus 5, like I think that'd be really cool to know.